Hi. Um, I'm in, obviously, because that's what the thing says. I wanted to talk about introverted intuition. Um, since I'm in the mood to make videos, I figure I might as well embrace it. And, um, because it doesn't happen often. Keep turning this. I don't want you to see the mess behind me. You might not think I'm a J. I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, <laughs> actually, there's a better angle, so I have my glasses on, so that means I'm serious. And, <laughs> doesn't it? Oh, actually, um, I didn't feel like wearing my contacts today, and I didn't in the other video, and I was like, crap, I, c I can see stuff, but, you know, not as well as I can with my glasses. And the reason I was thinking a lot about this is now that I'm official and I'm MBTI certified, I really connect more with introverted intuition and I've been kind of honing it in and, and zeroing in on it to make it my superpower because I have realized I always click a lot of stuff because I'm still kind of looking up stuff for ideas. So if you see me doing that, it's just because I think the way I think it's like in pictures and symbols and you know, when somebody interrupts me, I'm like, what? You know, because it, it's just like I have to stop and translate what I'm thinking and feeling into like actual English words, into words at all. So when I'm fidgeting around here right now, just because I've had a lot of coffee this morning, I don't know why. Well, I know why, because I'm tired, because I've been up talking to people. <laughs> and um, it's... It's really worth it. And you know, I, I have this thing and they make the jokes in, in the forum right now and in general. People joke about my thing with INTJs. Well, I wanna discuss that a little bit because I think dominant introverted intuition people and anybody who has something that's a dominant function for them can get along and understand somebody else with that same dominant function really well. And even though it manifests slightly different for me as far as I still have the same symbols and and uh, trying to connect the dots, you know, and flashes of insight that an INTJ does, for me, it, it evokes an immediate feeling. And after that, I process it and think about it and try to be objective. So I do both, um, and I think, you know, maybe INTJs do as well, as, but as far as I know, I mean, they have this, like, I probably shouldn't give away their secrets, but they have a really deep and rich inner life, just like INFJs do. And I find that very fascinating. And I'm not saying that other people don't. I'm just saying, because um, I don't want that to be mis a misconception. What I what I think is, you know, just like you're like Mike was saying about your twin. So if I were to be around another INFJ, which I grew up with, one my mother. Um, there are certain things that I do see in her and that I have worked on because I, you know, I can see my flaws are the same as her flaws. So, and I believe my dad is an INTJ. So I also think maybe Freud, maybe it's a Freud thing, you know, where, but I don't think it's just that. I really think that people who have the same dominant function can really relate a lot to each other than than people who don't and even if it's like your auxiliary function I find that relatable as well because I can relate to ENFJs a lot obviously you know <laughs> so and I think that um here there's the auxiliary function is also ENTJ and ENFJ has introverted intuition so there again you know we can relate with each other as far as like just not thinking you're a loom bucket you know like uh, there's a there's a big problem that I have sometimes with thinking that I'm losing my mind. And when I was reading this, I don't know if I put this in another video, this is the introverted intuition thing and it's a handout of the eight dominant functions from my class. And one of these things on it is, you know, saying aware of what will be, use these abstract symbols to explain and excited by the unknown. And when I was reading this description, it's like, it's like a whole page here. Um, when I was reading it, I, in class, um, I almost cried. <laughs> I almost cried like right in front of everybody because it's like there were finally words for what I've experienced so often and so much in my life and I had no idea. I mean, I did because I had heard of in introverted intuition, but I, not to the depth and level that, that, this, that this says. I mean, 
saying um, aware of what will be that introverted intuition is often called a sixth sense it needs no triggers in the external world to gain insight or understanding I mean I don't know if I said this where I said this but we were supposed to describe our dominant function in class and so as I was everyone was staring at me and I was really getting, kind of getting scared but they were like enraptured with the way that I described it manifesting in my life because you know there's been times where I just knew the answer like when I was in network class and um, computer network um, the teacher is like oh what's the answer to this and I like I just blurted it out he's like yeah but how did you know that I'm like I just know and he's like yeah but you should know the process behind it and blah 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 I'm like yeah because he thought I was relating it from experience I just knew the answer and um, I probably told I don't know if I told this story before but um, somebody that I was dating one time we were we were typing on IM. This was maybe when I was, gosh, I don't know, in my twenties, you know, fifteen years ago. <laughs> but uh, we we were typing, and I was at work, and he had mentioned nothing about this at all, and uh, he said, "Guess what I got?" And I just typed it right back, a puppy. And he was like, "What the f?" He's like, "How the hell did you know that? Like, how did you know that?" And for for months, for months, he was like pissed at me. I mean, really pissed because it was like going to be this great surprise. And then I thought back on it right after I had said it because he's like, what, you know, like, where did that come from? I just had this flash of a, a German shepherd, a little puppy with a purple bow on it and hopping around. And that's exactly what she was. She was a German shepherd and she, she had this like incredibly cute, like hopping thing when she got excited. And I, I just saw a puppy like bouncing on the bed. I just, I just saw it. And it was just a flash. I didn't even realize I saw it. I just, I blurted it out. And then, a, a, you know, it was a quick second later when he asked that, I go, like, oh, that, yeah, I did see, see something. And, um, I just have, like, a lot of, of hunches that are just always right. And it's kind of, it's kind of irritating. And I've related this with INTJs as well. It's like, you, you really want to be wrong, you know? Like, it would be really nice to be wrong sometimes, especially about the bad stuff. But... It really is like really rarely is wrong and that can be good in some ways because you feel like you're kind of like but you feel like you're kind of like cheating in life because you get these flashes and you just know what to say and you just know the right thing to do and if you follow it things are so smooth but if you don't oh my god life is hell you know life is horrible but if I follow it everything's great and peaches and roses and but it feels like wrong a little because it's like it shouldn't be this easy right I mean but I guess that's like anything maybe that's how most people feel I don't know with their dominant function like when you're really just in the mode and you're just using your best your best abilities that that it works really well for you then I think that's awesome I really do believe that when you do find out what your your type is and your dominant function that you should really embrace it and really make that like your most powerful asset because you know everybody has their pros and cons everybody's bad at things i'm terrible at math i mean absolutely horrendously horrible people don't even believe me and i'm like i'm really bad at math really really bad and <laughs> really bad <laughs> did i express that enough and i'm also um but I got a lot of other things going for me, just like anybody. So I think that's the thing is you, you find other people to fill in things that you're not good at. And I really admire people who are very logical and people who are very feeling and perceiving. And um, yeah, so to say that, I don't think that any two types are really, really romantically or friendship wise are really that horrible for each other because I think we all can learn from each other. And I think that's really what I learned then the um, in MBTI class is, you know, there, there were some people that I really, some personality types that I really thought that maybe they were kind of jerks and I met so many wonderful people of so many opposite types of me and they were wonderful you know and they were very self-aware and it really just opened my eyes to the fact that I could you know I could stand to not be so much of a typist so I see a lot of this stuff online and it's really it really makes me sad because you know everybody has something to offer I mean I'm not just saying that to blow sunshine up your butt I mean they really do I mean, it's incredible when um, 
when we had this exercise um, from sensors and intuitives to look at this picture. And we were all looking at the big picture, all of us intuitives, and we were like, what does this mean? Why is she asking us to do this exercise? Where do you think that picture came from? Do you think it's a greeting card? Do you think it's a book? Do you think it's from? And if the sensors were like, look, there's puppets here, there's marionettes, then there's the colors purple, bread, and they were noticing every single little detail. And we were all like, uh, we didn't even see that. I didn't even see that. You know, how valuable is that? That's amazing. And when we had to do numbers, this, um, the ESTJ that sat next to me just was like, just spit out the numbers. And I was like, oh, that's so awesome. I mean, and you need all of that in the world, you know? Uh, you know, one person to come up with the ideas and another person to execute it and execute it beautifully in an incredible detail. So I really think that everybody has a lot to offer and it saddens me to see this kind of stuff online like like really some people truly believe that there are better types than others and I think that's absolutely untrue and absolutely ridiculous and so in general I guess that's my rant <laughs> so I'm done with my rant about dominant functions and why everybody is awesome and everybody is awesome they are love you bye <laughs>